Firstly, how do we sustain the patient to have pro possible proteins and neuropathy? Swelling. Yes, it's almost a uh, generalized and it's after, almost like um, neuropathy syndrome. And the, actually, the one thing you probably need to quickly explain is whether there is protein in the urine, which can be done very quickly. <coughs> Okay, and then you think of possibility of protein using a rocket gene. So much of the causes is not a chronic condition, but I've seen probably more than half. Protein using a rocket gene. Okay, let's, since it's very condition, let's say what can cause protein using a rocket gene in the stomach? The stomach. Any gastric acid. What? No, no, gastric acid secretion. I know you are wrong. As <laughs> usual. Hydrotrophic folks. <coughs> what do you call the condition? And he chased disease. Hydrotrophic <coughs> thick folks. And then and then another mark some condition. Lysis plastic. See some the extensive surface causing loss of protein. <coughs> so hypertrophic folk in which is disease and linatis classic. Have you heard about linatis classic? Yes. Alright. So short, uh, small bound and easy. The first one is easy. Thank you very much. You are absolutely correct. This Crohn's. Anything else? Is a small bound? Okay, any outstanding issues in small bowel is potentially possible. Uh, you may not see it yet, but uh, if they are coming down from above, you may see TB. TB of the small bowel, if the outstanding surface is big enough, and also the lymphoma of the small bowel. And then there are two more conditions. In the intestinal infection case here. And mostly, actually, I've seen quite a few, mostly actually young subjects, but I've seen in adult onset too. And the second patient actually, his, uh, you may remember, his elbow uh, was 23. So he suspect has he got intestinal invagitation. In fact, he did, he did the liver biopsy. And then after the transplant, it's gone. So I presume it's related to the positive hypertension, causing intestinal invagitation. Anything else? <coughs> One more that you should definitely know. What are you? Why do you ask me? Lymphangiectasia. Lymphangiectasia. You mean you don't know what I'm talking about? Diabetes lymphatics. And there's one more condition. Autoimmune diseases. SLE usually give us with serocytis. In certain occasions, they can also give us with leukocytes. Usually, it's rather late stage. So, the patient will already have a normal diagnosis SLE, but there may be leukocytes too. Coming back to the large bowel, is, we're coming down, down to the large bowel, not back. Very easy. Yes. Yes, and uh, colonic problems. I, I don't think I've ever seen lymphoma or CA colon, CA colon to find in last year. So just mainly also colitis and Crohn's disease. Causes of protein losing enteropathy can be easily found in the internet. There are more than 30 causes that I can't remember them all. Different references may classify the causes of protein losing enteropathy differently. For example, mucosal diseases with or without ulcerations, lymphatic problem, congenital causes. The importance of Professor Lai's tutorial is that he teaches the thinking process. He first asks along the intestine, stomach, small bowel, colon, and others. Stomach causes hypertrophic gastropathy, some particular gastritis. Small bowel causes intestinal lymphangiectasia, which can be further classified into primary and secondary. Then inflammatory bowel disease. Then Professor gives the tips about different disease categories, namely malignancy, autoimmune, infection, and drugs. I always share with the students that if we have difficulty in generating differential diagnosis, 
Think about MAID, M-A-I-D, small bowel. Apart from intestinal lymphangiectasia, malignancy, intestinal lymphoma, autoimmune, celiac disease, infection, including bacterial overgrowth, repose disease, tropical sprue, going down to colon. Apart from inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune, collagious colitis, infection, Clostridium difficile, that is, pseudomembranous colitis, can cause protein losing enteropathy. There are many other causes for protein losing enteropathy, like mesenteric problem, portal hypertension, hepatic venous outflow obstruction, congestive heart failure, fontan procedure, constrictive pericarditis, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, malignancy like involving mesenteric lymphatics, GI malignancy, autoimmune, SLE, connective tissue disease, infection, including tuberculosis, viral, and parasitic infections. Last but not the least NSAID non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are known to cause protein losing enteropathy. Suggestions for further reading. Professor tells me that don't rely on Google. I suggest go back to books or if you have time. An article by Luca in Current Opinion in Gastroenterology in 2020 or Olsen's article in New England Journal of Medicine in 2023 are good to read. In summary, Professor Lai Qinglong asks about causes of protein losing enteropathy. He teaches the thinking process any questions or comments? Thank you. See you next time.